Brother Tian. Yes? This pandemic is just getting worse and worse. Yeah. And we have no idea how long it'll last. Sure. Lots of people feel like the end times are upon us, and they're frightened. Ha! Who wouldn't be scared to die, though? Well, fear alone is useless, though. Oh? What would you say we should be focusing on as believers through all of this? <laughs> we have to repent to the Lord so that he'll protect and keep us safe from the pandemic. Ah, you're not wrong. Yes. Back in the Age of Law, what did the Ninevites do when faced with their own plague? Ha! <laughs> A prophet told them God was going to destroy Nineveh. Yeah. From the king and nobles down to the commoners. Uh. Everyone put on sacks and ashes and knelt to repent before God. Only then did Jehovah God change his mind and spare Nineveh in the end. Ah. Uh. As people of faith, we all know uh. that Nineveh's king led his subjects in repentance to God. That was something special. It really was. So now that we're all living in the last days... Yeah. Why haven't we seen any world leaders act like King of Nineveh, leading their people in repentance to God? Yes, yes, you're right there. Right? Why do you think people living in the last days don't know that God rules all and our fate is in his hands? Ha! Huh. Non-believers just deny God's existence. So why would they think that he rules our fates then? Huh. They really don't believe that only God can forgive our sins, that confessing and repenting to him is the only way to escape disaster. That's why, in the pandemic, they isolate, stay at home, shut inside, and do nothing at all. They don't know what else to do. Huh. Huh. Hey, but don't they always say God sees all and heaven has a plan huh? for us, all in the end? They do. Then when a pandemic happens, why do they deny God's existence and rule? Huh. Because they don't believe in God at all, Brother Lee. They wouldn't repent because of a pandemic. Yeah. All they can do is quarantine, sit at home, and do nothing at all. Besides that, they can't do anything. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. But we believe in the Lord, so we're different. Oh, how so? Well, in the pandemic, uh -huh. we make sure to pray, confess, and repent twice as much. Doing this will guarantee we will be safe from the disaster. Our faith in this is unwavering. Ah, uh, <laughs> the faith you have is so very special. Yes, it is. But you say confessing all our sins to the Lord guarantees nothing will happen to us. Yeah? Does that really work? Doesn't it? Is confession the same thing as repentance? I don't think that it is. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We pray and confess to the Lord, and then he forgives us our sins. Isn't that what true repentance is? <laughs> it's true that our sins are forgiven through our faith. Huh? But is that really the same thing as true repentance? But isn't it so? We are always praying and confessing, but we continue to lie and commit sins and can't oh? practice the Lord's words. We just sin and confess constantly. It's kind of an endless cycle. Is that true repentance? Well, uh, well when you say it like that, there does seem to be something to it. See? So prayer and confession to God doesn't count as true repentance then? If that's the only thing we do without putting his words into practice, then it's not true repentance. Oh. The Lord said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm. And remember what Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says? Huh. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils? And in your name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Ah, uh, what do you think about these Bible verses? Has everyone who cries, Lord, Lord, really repented? Nope. Uh, that's right. Not everyone. Actually, huh? <laughs> you know, some people just confess without actually repenting, and the Lord could never applaud them. Huh. But people who are humble, patient, who can discipline their body, and who take up a cross to follow the Lord, haven't they all truly repented then, hmm? Ah, uh, <laughs> so that's what you think true repentance is. Is that not right? It's not wrong per se. Ah, I think you're just a little off. Sure. Huh? Uh, I'm off? Are you saying that true repentance is just behaving yourself well? Isn't it? What else is there? <laughs> of course it isn't. The Pharisees explained the scriptures every day and traveled all over to preach the gospel. They appeared to do many good deeds. Oh, sure. Everyone believed they were very devout. But when the Lord Jesus came and did his work, the Pharisees showed their true colors. Uh -huh. They condemned him and helped the Romans put him to death on the cross. What was the problem? Why did the Lord curse them with the seven woes? If they truly repented, how could they have resisted and condemned him? 
Isn't that right? Huh? That's really a good point there. So doing good doesn't count as truly repenting, then? Of course not. Oh? Think about it. If someone only acts like a good person, always confessing and praying to the Lord, but then simply can't help themselves but to lie and sin, even resist God, do they submit to God? Do they do His will? Would the Lord approve of them? Absolutely not. Why not, then? If they condemn, resist the Lord, how could that be true repentance? Ha! Huh. Now you know what true repentance is. Ah. Anyone who's been forgiven by God, but who keeps resisting Him, hasn't truly repented at all by any means. Oh. Plenty of believers leave everything mm -hmm. behind to spread the gospel and to bear witness. But they never once submit to the Lord or practice the truth. They don't live by His words one bit. Has this kind of person genuinely repented then? I don't think they have. No, that's not true repentance. Ah, now you're getting it. Oh. All true believers will sacrifice themselves and do anything for the Lord. So why aren't all of their sacrifices and their hard work commended by the Lord then? Have you ever thought about that? Huh? It's never crossed my mind. Uh, but I do think that we should all try to be like Paul and spread the gospel. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Well, think about it. Why do we make all of our sacrifices and work hard for the Lord? Isn't it to be rewarded and get into heaven? Huh, what's wrong with that, though? Of course we do that to get into heaven, brother. Ah, then isn't it all for personal gain? Is it really God's will, then? Or is it like a deal with God? A deal? That's right. Everyone makes sacrifices and works hard for the Lord, only so they can get into heaven. Huh. Isn't that a problem? Uh, yeah. Wow, it really is a problem. Why didn't it ever occur to me? God looks deep within our hearts. Do you really think he wouldn't see something as important as what truly drives us? He sees if people truly obey and revere him, if they truly love him, oh. or if they do things just for a reward or for God. It's like night and day. Oh, ah, when you put it that way, I think I do get it. So all our hard work and sacrifice for the Lord shouldn't be just because we want to get into heaven. Exactly. It should be to love and satisfy God. Huh, I never understood that all before. <laughs> now think about this. Yeah? If someone believes in the Lord and has been forgiven oh. by Him, and they make sacrifices for God and do many good things for others, has this person truly repented or not? Huh, I really couldn't say. Does he still sin and go against the Lord? If he really submits to God, then he'd have truly repented. Yep, you hit the nail on the head. Yes. Understanding what true repentance is isn't an easy task at all. You're right. Now picture this. Oh, okay, okay, well, hold on one second. Now I have a question for you, brother. <laughs> ha, sure, go for it. All right, we pray every day to the Lord and try to live disciplined lives. Uh. So why can't we just get rid of sin or truly repent to God? Explain to me what's really going on. Uh, it's because people are sinful by nature. Sinful by nature? That's right. The Lord Jesus redeemed us all in the age of grace. So through our faith, we've been forgiven our sins. But we're still all sinful by nature, to our core. Huh? Yes, we're all arrogant, self-righteous, cunning, evil, selfish, and greedy. Our sinful nature has us all in its death grip. Huh. That's why we always live in sin. And no matter how much we pray and confess or discipline ourselves, we can't escape the bonds of sin or truly repent. Oh, so that's the root of all sin then. Exactly. Huh? Then how could we ever escape our sinful nature? Ah, uh, the Lord said he would return to express to us all the truth to judge and cleanse us and to completely free us of our sinful nature. Ah, uh, you're saying that the Lord's going to return for judgment and free us from sin forever. Right. There are actually quite a few biblical prophecies about the Lord coming uh, back to us for judgment. Uh, what are they then? Here are a few. I will come near to you to judgment. He shall judge the world with justice and the people with equity. He shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And what does it say in 1 Peter 4:17? Uh, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yes. The Lord also said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Yes. God's words here are quite opaque. Huh? They actually mean that God will come in the last days to utter truth for judgment and personally guide us to enter all the truths that can fully wash us free and save us from Satan's corruption. Oh, huh. now I'm learning so much today. Huh. 
The Lord coming back for the judgment work is in line with the scripture. It is. Huh? huh? Uh, what's wrong? How exactly did you figure this out? <laughs> Why haven't I heard about all this? Without God oh. revealing to us the truths and mysteries, no one would know. Oh? There's a key prophecy in Revelation. Uh, which one? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Ah. Why is this one repeated so much? Huh? Why is it? It's showing people the path to welcome the Lord. Oh. There's a path to welcome the Lord? Of course. If you hear what the Holy Spirit says to the churches, and you're sure in your heart that it's really the voice of God, isn't that welcoming the Lord? Eh? Then where can I find the Holy Spirit's words to the churches? Why haven't I heard anything? What the Holy Spirit says to the churches is already online. I've only welcomed the Lord because I've read what the Holy Spirit uh, said. You've welcomed the Lord? That's right. Really? The Lord Jesus has returned. He's Almighty God in the flesh. Oh. He utters truth and brings judgment starting with His house to finally cleanse and save us, lead us to His kingdom. Uh, so tell me then, how exactly does the Lord perform judgment? Ah, uh, you'll get it once I've read some words of Almighty God. Oh, great. In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, to expose the essence of man, and to dissect the words and deeds of man. These words comprise various truths. In his work of judgment, God does not clarify man's nature with just a few words. He exposes, deals with, and prunes over the long term. These methods of exposure, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth of which man is utterly bereft. Only such methods can be called judgment. Such judgment is all that can subdue man and convince them to submit to God and truly know God. Oh, let me read the rest. Okay. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God much understanding of the purpose of God's work and of the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the root of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment, for this work's substance is the work of opening up the truth, way, and life of God to all those who have faith in him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. Amen. Wow. How do you feel after reading Almighty God's words? Oh, yes. God uses the truth to do the work of judgment. That's really deep. Sure. It seems to me that these are the words of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly right on point. Yeah? These are the Holy Spirit's words to the churches. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Almighty God expresses the truth to cleanse and save us. He reveals the root of the world's evil and how we all have been corrupted by Satan. Oh. He judges our satanic nature and shows us how we resist and betray him. He also shows us how to cleanse our corrupt disposition and be fully gained by him. Oh, so this is how God performs judgment then. Exactly. After being judged by God, we know his righteous disposition brooks no offense and also gain understanding of our satanic nature and how we resist God. Then we're filled with self-loathing and we fall before God to repent. Through the judgment of God's words, we can slowly release ourselves from sin and finally revere and obey Him. That's what true repentance is. Oh. So by accepting Almighty God's judgment and chastisement, we can know our satanic nature and truly repent. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. That's much more profound than just praying and confessing. <laughs> Apparently, accepting Almighty God's judgment can really resolve all sin then. Ah, uh, you're so right. Ah. Uh, Almighty God's judgment is the only way for people to be cleansed of sin and truly saved. Only those who accept his judgment and all the truths he expresses and who can truly repent will gain God's protection through any disaster. They won't ever be in danger. Huh. Ah, uh, that reminds me of a specific Bible verse. Which one? A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Apparently, only accepting Almighty God's judgment and truly repenting can protect us from great disasters. Exactly. <laughs> I used to think that huh? if we prayed and confessed to the Lord, we'd get his approval, and then we would be all safe from disasters. I thought we would all be protected that way. But now that I think about it, this is nothing but a 
groundless myth. <laughs> thanks be to God. You finally get it. Yes, thanks be to God. But there are still many people set in their ways who won't repent even in a disaster. True. We're going on 30 years since Almighty God appeared. His words have been online for a while and have been translated into many languages, openly bearing witness to his work. But how many people really have tried to seek the true way? And how many world leaders have led their people to know God's work and prepare for his return? <sighs> Not a single one. Exactly. People in the last days are so corrupt. Everyone just rejects God and is ruled by their sin and lust. Hmm. No one yearns for God's truth or the true light. You're right. Even lots of religious people are like that now. They don't look into it when learning of the Lord's return. And most pastors and elders do all they can to resist and condemn Almighty God. How are they any different from all the Pharisees who resisted the Lord Jesus? They're exactly the same. Yes. Back in the Age of Grace, when the Lord Jesus worked, humanity resisted and condemned him, even nailing him to the cross. In the last days, Almighty God has come to save man. And again, he's been condemned and rejected by man. He's been relentlessly hunted down by the CCP. Mankind already committed the terrible sin of crucifying God again, offending his disposition. So how could all these evil people who resist God escape his wrath and punishment? Huh. People who don't accept his truth, who turn from and deny God, will be sorry when they aren't safe from future disasters. For sure. God's wrath is being brought upon all of mankind, with one disaster after another. This is God trying to warn us, to seek his reappearance, and repent before it's too late. Yes, this is God giving us the chance to repent. Exactly. If people keep refusing to seek God's work, if they don't accept the truth that Almighty God has huh? uttered, but only stay isolated, just praying and confessing, can they escape disaster? Uh, absolutely not. They won't be able to escape their fate. Yes. Disasters aren't on accident. Anyone who resists and blasphemes Almighty God will be punished. Mm. Only those who accept the judgment and cleansing of Almighty God's words will be protected and saved from all future disasters. Oh wow, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go, brother. Where? To go read Almighty God's words online. <laughs> oh, so now he can't wait. <laughs>